Italy, but we still need to make Italians. High Alpine fighting, rocking terrain, and of course, the deadly trenches of the Western Front. In the mountains, of course, Italy joins the Allies in the Great War, but why? We shall soon find out. Italy, as a country itself, was fairly new. The country itself was unified in 1961. It existed in ancient times, so the um, Roman, the Roman continuity still stands. But as a modern, in as a modern constitutional country, it was founded in 1861. Since the fall of the Roman Empire and losing land to the Austrian-Hungarians, but wars of reunif but wars of reunification soon brought Italy together, but not fully. But with little intervention, with a little intervention from the French, Giuseppe Gabaldi got his nation. But there was still land seen as Italian in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, mostly in the Alpine region in the north, Trieste, and small other islands scattered out in the Adriatic Sea. And what brought Italy into war itself? was irredentism to gain the Italian lands back from the Austro-Hungarian empires at a population of 35 million it was the sixth largest country in Europe at the time but unlike its counterparts she was poor very undeveloped mostly agricultural but that coal steel and even their food supply was imported and illiteracy was very high but even though Italy was unified it was still fractured with no real nationhood for example Sicilians, Sicilians and Venetians could not understand their own dialect they couldn't understand each other and only in Florence was the true Italian dialect really spoken as all powers in Europe Italy was a constitutional monarchy and Victor Emmanuel III sat on the throne until 1995 after World War II. I mean, they weren't really kings after World War II, so he, he had a he had a good run. But the main peer, but the main player before the war was Giovanni Giolitti. From 1901 right up to the war. In 1914, he had made vast liberal reforms and, isol and, is and isolated the extreme left and the right and made a central issue that they both could agree upon. But early in 1914, he was replaced by Antonio Salandra, but and the extremists hated Giovanni for his ideas lack substance and he didn't go after the main policy of Italy, which was irredentism. And they thought his ideas lacked substance. They didn't really want, they really wanted irredentism. They really wanted the Italian lands back from the Austro-Hungarians. But Italy itself was actually the most extremist country in Europe. This simple quote will explain everything. The ideas of the extremists in Italy. We want to glorify war. The only hygiene for war. The only hygiene for war. We want to glorify war. The only hygiene for the world. Militarism. Patriotism. Beautiful ideas to die for. Italian, cons con Italian colonialism, as other European powers, was trying to set its foot upon the world stage. Irony. They fought the Italo-Turkish War, which secured Libya and Somaliland to a certain extent, because they're basically they're kind of close to each other. One, Libya is at the top of Somaliland. But to catch Libya was at a high cost in men and money. And it still needed men to look over the colony and make sure it was secure and no other nation would go after it. 
He also formed a defensive alliance with the Germans and Austro-Hungarians in 1882. The treaty stated if attacked by one nation, no intervention, but by two or more nations, the pact will come to its aid. It was to expire in 1914, but was renewed in 1912 with the new article guaranteed the signatories compensation should either make a permanent or temporary gain in territory in the Balkans. Now a couple of weeks after the assassination of Franz Josef, the Italian foreign minister warned if Austria went to war with Serbia, Italy had a right to compensation under Article 7, but Austria said they had no territorial ambitions whatsoever. But then they sent the ultimatum to Serbia without telling Italy and the Italian government felt the Austrians were breaking the article article and went strictly neutral. Arm neutrality, but neutral. And was exempt from the war. But neutrality came at a price. It threw the country into terror, chaos, strikes, demonstrations, and the question soon became never not what if Italy would join the war, but when and on whose No, the question was not when Italy would join the war, but on whose side. The hot the hot the hotheads wanted a war in general, and most of them wanted the land from Austria Hungary, irredentism. And the new cabinet was pretty anti-Austrian Hungarian and Salandra wanted to join the side of the Entente because the Entente really could deliver a lot because to fight for the Austro-Hungarians the Italian land would still be there no inter- no in- irritant irredentism of course and um, Germany didn't really have much to give it's in the central of Europe so there's no Italian land, there's nothing really for Germany to do and the Ottomans are over there and they already got Libya so the Entente so the winter period for the Austrian Hungarians was a terrible they lost the winter campaign in Serbia and they lost the fortress of Pirmisil to the Russians while at and maybe even facing a Russian invasion. So Italy now had to decide join the Central Powers, like I said, and gain what? Or join the Entente, get back their land, maybe get some German Austrian possessions. Most of the Austrian possessions are basically the irritan, irritan, irredentism, so that's already established. Um, to get Germ- the and of course, the Middle East would be separated in half because, with the secret deal of 1915, Russia, England, France, and Italy was in it a bit to divide and conquer the Middle East and basically split apart the Ottoman Empire like they did, like the Allies did in World War II with Germany. So, the Entente had a lot to give. Also, yeah, even if they did join with the Central Powers, Italy was basically cut off from food and water since I stated in the beginning. Remember I stated that most of their food was imported, even though they were very agricultural. Most of the food needed to make other foods which they grew on their lands. You know what I mean? Like they might have they might they might grow wheat, but they might need to import um, tomatoes to put on the pizza. Just example that nobody puts tomatoes on pizza. Tomato sauce, but not tomatoes. So Italy was basically dependent from France and England, and they really wanted 70,000 Italians back from the lands the Austro Hungarians had. So while left and right were different in their ways, like I said, like just like Giovanni Gialetti, they were focused on one particular concern the redentism while the catholic church and the socialists could not really um get together and unify as one so the majority was 
Italy would go to war.